Right Baker, congratulations on another year with the Orange Open. Uh, I think there's about 20 now under your belt at this stage or thereabouts. Uh, you've been called the father of martial arts in uh, Ireland and it's uh, great to see that you've progressed to a stage now where you're also president of the WECO, which is the World Organization of Kickboxing. So uh, at this point in time in your career, do you feel that there's anything left for you to achieve in relation to uh, organizations and where have you or where do you believe the organization organization of martial arts can go well under your leadership of course um, not just me there's, there's there's lots of visionaries and leaders in, in the martial arts and particularly in kickboxing that i'm involved in and love so the irish open and, and the combat games and and the world games they're all stepping stones to an evolution of a sport and the ultimate evolution of sports is to have my sport in the olympic games as I said earlier, that's going to be eight years from now, 14 years from now, but it's my vision. We expect to get Olympic recognition this year. We're already in the combat games, we're already in the World Games, and we're going to be in the Olympic Games, the European Olympic Games. So we need to get into the IOC Games. The sport needs to evolve more. It needs to get better. Uh, we can't sit in our laurels. We've got over 12,000 members now in Kickboxing Ireland. But that's just the beginning. Uh, my vision is that Kickboxing Ireland will be one of the main national governing bodies on the island of Ireland. Uh, I am certainly not the father of the martial arts in Ireland. You have people like Martin Bannon, Eddie Ince, Pat Lynch, Joe Close, Joe Canning, George Canning. You have these people that were there well before me. I've been just around a long time and I seem to be in the right place at the right time when we're, 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 when we're blossoming. But it, it, the, the reason we blossom is we blossom because of lots of people. I'm only the captain, but there's so many people running this ship, far more capable and competent than me. My job is just to make sure the ship is going in the right direction and we're all together. You're a modest man, Roy, and I uh, appreciate that point of view. As regards your own uh, background in the martial arts, you're a seventh down uh, black belt. Uh, I know you're a fourth down and a couple of, uh, you're fourth down and three down enough for the start. So you've seen the martial arts, there's not much that you don't know about it. As regards martial arts as uh, in general, do you feel that it's going in the right direction with the introduction of mixed martial arts and so on and so forth? Or do you think that's all part of the evolution of the great sport? It, it, it's an evolution of the sport. There's different evolutions. MMA has its moment, kickboxing has its moment, other sports, boxing has its moment, different sports evolve. It's when that evolution changes, it's really important when the sport continues or degenerates. So I think MMA has a number of more years till it kind of plateaus, like every sport plateaus. And where that goes from there, I don't know. The main thing about MMA is we need regulation. You know, there's no really, the UFC is a phenomenal, it's really well regulated, well structured. But it's the whole amateur area that we have to get right in Ireland and elsewhere to make sure that it's safe, it's controlled, there's applicable rules, there's applicable safety guidelines. It's really important that we can do these things to make sure that the sport itself is safe. I'm not saying it's not safe, but there needs to be a world body like WACO in, in, in the MMA or something else to govern the MMA. That's the danger at the moment. But MMA itself is extraordinarily technical. Very good, very good. As regards your own experience, like you won world championships, I think over 50 world championships, between world championships and European championships, so you know about the exchange in combat and so on and so forth. Do you feel for young people to appeal to them, to come into the sport, that it's a safe environment? Like this weekend, you've over 3,000 fighters that are, that are coming in to fight under the umbrella of the... Uh, the uh, 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 sorry for not being able to get that out. Uh, in, the, in relation to that and the safety that's required in that, do you feel that you have actually addressed that issue and you feel confident that young people coming into sport are in a safe environment, although it's a contact sport, it's disciplined and it's highly uh, regulated to an extent yeah, that parents could feel confident that their children are coming yeah, it's in. It's highly regulated. It's, it's like any sport. Like in, in kickboxing, we have, we have all the safety equipment, we have all the safety protocols, we have the medical checks, we have a medic standing at every area, we have doctors, we have paramedics, we have advanced paramedics, we have multiple ambulances. So our job in the sport is to mitigate the exposure to risk. We can't take away the risk because you're in a contact sport. But in my opinion, the contact sport that kickboxing has, there's various levels of contact. You have the point fighting, which is stop, start, hit, and move back. You have light contact, which is continuous hitting, but you're not allowed to knock out, and then you have full contact. So depending on the type of person you are and the type of sport you like, there's a place for you in kickboxing. That's what makes it quite different to, to boxing and other sports. If you don't like knockout, if you don't like hard contact, you win the point fighting, where you can hit and move off, they score it, and you move on. Is it safe? It's as safe as we can make it. Um, I have my own two children do it. Uh, 
touch wood somewhere. We haven't had any major incident in kickboxing in, a, in, a, in, a, in Ireland in, a, in, a, in, a de in a, over a decade. We did have a debt in kickboxing in Ireland about 12 years ago, but they weren't part of kickboxing in Ireland. I wasn't there, I don't know what safety protocols were there, but I know that when kickboxing Ireland won a show, we have everything in place, because we don't run it if we don't have it in place. You've got your doctors, your paramedics, your ambulances, your spinal units, everything is there. It's their place, and we have unbelievably complicated rules that we follow, all around safety. So it's fair to say that it's well regulated, and credit to yourself being somebody that has uh, pushed at the highest level for safety with all the experience that you have. So you would feel that to any parents out there that yeah, it is a sport to be involved in. There are it is a combat sport, but it's no more dangerous dangerous than football or whatever because of the regulations. That's Absolutely, in place. it's the same as football. It's the same as rugby. You know, it's the same as GAA. They're all contact sports, guys. People forget. If you look at the main, like we're looking at head trauma at the moment with kickboxing in the world, and we're looking at and 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 the, and the there's, there's there's huge amount of data on head trauma. Do you know what the biggest sport in the world is in relation to head trauma? Go on. Have a guess. I don't know. Soccer. Wow. Creates more head trauma than any other sport in the world. You're heading in the ball. There's clashes in the head. You're hitting the goalpost. All right. Now, next is rugby. So down the pecking order. It's down the pecking order. And boxing right. isn't even there at the moment. And right. th th these are all really highly academic research that has been taking place. Right. Now, so there's many, many sports there are contact sports. And the job of every sport is to, where it's possible, mitigate the risk for injury. Right. So a little about yourself, Roy, for the two. Your regime when you were in full uh, combat uh, competition mode, your training and your discipline and so on and so forth, obviously has helped you to grow and develop as a person, both physically and mentally. And for our young people looking on there, what would you say to them as regards the training, the dedication and diets, etc., etc., in order to reach a high standard like a Robbie McMenemy, or should I say yourself when you were in your prime too, to what, what well, would you recommend? I'm well past my prime, really 50. Uh, You're only young for it. Go go on, go on. God. For, for me, it's, it's, it's like, I, I said it earlier again, it's like everything in life. If you really want it, you can have it. All it takes is hard work and perseverance. Um, I've been very lucky in my life, both in my career, in my personal life, with my children and in my sport. Um, I work hard, uh, I play fair, I'm honest. Um, I treat people with respect, I expect to be respected. Um, it's just really, you know, take the right choice in life. I mean, I came from Valley Fairmont back in the 80s, and I used to have my, my, I used to get a pair of trousers handed down to me from my brother. That's a fact. That's not it. Oh, poor him. That was a fact. My mum and dad worked hard. It's a tough time in the 80s, as you know, in, in, in Ireland, and uh, we had a we had a, a fantastic upbringing, but it was tough, and that tough develops character. One of the problems I see in society now, including my own children, let me point them, is that. We're losing that character. Our children expect so much. They expect iPhones, they expect uh, and they expect it. And also the parents have a peer pressure to stay up with the Joneses. Uh, we've lost, we've absolutely lost the community in Ireland. We've lost, I used to go on uh, weekend trips with my mum and dad down to Butlins or down to Phoenix Park with the whole road. You know, all of those things, we seem to be losing that community. We seem to be losing that spirit. We're losing that interconnection. There's so many people now don't know people who live five five doors down from them. I used to walk down five doors to get a load of sugar. <laughs> it's 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 different now, eh? And so Roy, sorry you cut the grass because there's a minute left on the table here. So the boy from Valley Firm, uh, you succeeded and reached the height on a world stage both as a, as a fighter competitor but more so now as an organiser. And going forward you believe that uh, the sport is safe in the sense that it's going to develop and grow more, that it's a standalone sport, kickboxing in, in itself, and that there's a future there in it that will eventually lead to, as you believe, maybe eight, or eight years time that we could have a Norwich Olympic gold medal kickboxer. Yes. If, if our sport continues to develop the way it's going and do what we're doing and with the vision and strategy that we have, we're going to be one of the strongest national governing bodies on the island of Ireland. Okay. Well, last but not least, do you think that that kid will come from Bushido, Tala Martial Arts, Spartan Martial Arts, or where would you reckon that, that lucky kid that will get to stand on the podium with the gold medal oh, will be? No, that's <laughs> another question. I'm not answering that question. Ah, uh, go on. No matter okay. what way Roy I Baker. answer that one, I lose. <laughs> Roy Baker, thank you very much for this time, and uh, we look forward to 